Thank you for joining us. We have Tracy here in conjunction with um, from the YMCA in conjunction with the Commission on Aging. She's going to talk to you about healthy habits during quarantine. Now, if you guys could um, mute yourself during that, and then if you have a question, um, Tracy will kind of go over how she wants that to go. Um, but if you could mute yourself so we don't get background phone calls or something going through during the presentation, that would be great. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Holly. And thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be able to present this um, informative talk on some healthy habits during quarantine. Um, I have a section at the end for questions. So if you guys want to just... Um, you know, wait until the end. You can also maybe put some stuff into the chat section um, if you are, um, you don't want to forget your question. Okay, so um, like Holly said, my name is Tracy. I'm from the YMCA of East Bay. Um, I work in the Pleasant Hill branch location. Um, so I have a background in um, personal training, group exercise, nutrition and weight loss, behavior change, and I have a degree in kinesiology. And the reason um, I got started in this type of work is I suffer from a few chronic illnesses and I really use um, the way I eat and the type of way that I move my body as a way to kind of keep my inflammation and my pain at bay. So I'm hopeful you guys will get some really good um, tips today. Let me go ahead and do the next slide. So we're going to start our talk off with some health tips. So one of the most important things to um, work on when it comes to our health is drinking water and making sure that we're staying hydrated. Um, so drinking water can prevent dehydration, which is a condition that can cause us to um, not be able to think clearly. We can have um, mood changes. We can, um, our body can overheat and uh, we can get, uh, you know, constipation and kidney stones. Um, and then this is also a way for people to get uh, bladder and kidney infections, not being hydrated enough. So it's really important to make sure that that's something that we're working on. So some ways to make sure that you are staying hydrated. Um, some suggestions are thinking about water as part of your routine. So if we think about drinking a glass of water in the morning, um, a glass of water with breakfast, one at lunch, one at dinner, and then one in the evening before bed, that can be a really good way to work on just making sure you're getting kind of a minimum amount of water. Uh, keep a water bottle with you at all times to cue you to drink water. So I keep my water bottle on my desk. Um, I like to use a see-through water bottle so that I can see how much water I've had. I think sometimes if we have a more opaque bottle, it's harder to kind of think about like you, we can't see how much is in there. Um, and then also there's lots of different apps and journals where we can keep track of our water too. Um, the next healthy tip that we want to talk about is the importance of sleep. So why do we need quality sleep? Uh, basically, sleep is very important for overall health. It's vital for um, brain plasticity, it's for the brain's ability to adapt to input. If we sleep too little, we're unable to process what we've learned during the day, and then we have more trouble remembering things in the future. Uh, it's also really important for the rest of our body. So when we don't get enough sleep, our um, health risks will rise. So symptoms of depression, seizures, high blood pressure, and migraines can um, get worse. And then also um, immuni immunity is compromised. Um, and so um, when we are chronically um, not getting enough sleep, we're more likely to develop illness and infection. Um, and so that's especially important right now with um, COVID. So um, it's also really important. Um, it plays a really important role in your metabolism. Um, basically one night of poor sleep or missed sleep um, can create a environment in your body that is very similar to a pre-diabetic state. Um, and so what can happen there is your body will send you these messages out that you need uh, to have high sugar so you can get energy. 
So that's something we want to try to uh, make sure that we're on a more uh, level playing field with the amount of sleep we're getting. So the next thing we're going to talk about um, is how do we do that? How do we get good sleep? So there is a terminology called sleep hygiene. Uh, sleep hygiene is basically a set of rules that will help you hopefully get better sleep. So one of the first things to do is be really consistent with your sleep schedule. Um, so go to bed at the same time each night and get up at the same time each morning. That includes the weekends. Um, sometimes that's really tempting when we have time to sleep in. Uh, we might be, okay, I'm gonna catch up on my sleep from the week. So we wanna make sure that we can try to, um, you know, have that consistent schedule. Uh, number two, make sure your bedroom is quiet, um, dark, relaxing, and at a comfortable temperature. So we sleep better when the room is quiet um, and dark, and then we actually sleep better when it's a little bit cooler in the room. We want to remove electronic devices such as TVs, computers, and smartphones from the bedroom. Um, electronic devices have, a, there's a particular type of um, technology that produces something called blue light. And blue light is um, something that is, has been shown to cause a disruption in your sleep cycle. Um, and so they actually start sell, have started selling like blue light canceling glasses. Um, I'm gonna put mine on really quick so you guys can see and then I'm gonna take them off because they create a, a very bad glare. So you guys can see that it's kind of taking the, the blue light and, it's, and uh, it's, I'm not absorbing that into my eyes. Um, we also wanna avoid large meals, caffeine and alcohol before bedtime. So all of those types of things are gonna stimulate our system. Um, and make it more challenging to fall asleep. And then also, lastly, we wanna be able to get some exercise. Um, being physically active during the day can help us fall asleep more easily at night. When we use our body more, we are able to get a more restful sleep because we're, our body's tired too. So that's always helpful. Okay, we're gonna move on to healthy eating. All right, so it's really important, especially now to um, make sure that we have really healthy eating habits. Um, we wanna think about a, a change in our lifestyle, how, whatever kind of change we're doing as a really slow process. Um, I think sometimes when we wanna undertake new uh, behavior change, we feel like we're gonna have to just change everything from today till tomorrow, and that's really hard. Um, to be able to stick to that long term. So we want to think about it as just like one small change at a time. Maybe focus on one thing a week and then move on from there. Um, so one small change could be to try to add something healthy to your diet instead of initially taking everything away. So uh, maybe is there a place in my, in my eating every day where I could add some um, fresh fruit? Or is there a way that I could add some vegetables in during the day? One example is um, adding water to your day um, and then add um, maybe some lemon, right? So um, maybe take away a soda and add a water in. Some people don't like the taste of you know, plain water. And so um, there's lots of different options for flavoring it. Um, if you were to do something like with a lemon, um, lime, orange, grapefruit, whatever, um, the acid um, in those citrus fruits are very helpful for digestion of, um, with different types of foods. Um, also, we uh, are all under a tremendous amount of stress every day um, with this global pandemic, and um, it's just something that we're all kind of having to try to live through. Um, and stress can deplete your energy. Um, if we have too much stress, it starts breaking down the protein um, the muscle in our body and, um, and it makes cortisol. So we always wanna to try to add some protein in or add some good fats into every meal, every snack. So healthy fats or proteins, um, you could do like half an avocado with sea, um, sea salt and lime. Um, that would help you get some of those really nice, healthy, you know, polyunsaturated fats in your diet. Um, we can add a handful of almonds, roasted chicken breast, tofu, um, and tofu is the only non-animal um, food that is a complete protein and has as much um, protein as animal products. So 
um, however your eating style is, you can definitely make sure that you can get protein in. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the importance of um, having social support. So research um, shows that the magnitude of risk presented by social isolation is very similar to folks who are smoking, who are um, obese, who have lack, of, lack access to care and physical inactivity. Um, so loneliness is going to have the same effects on your mind and your body as those other type of um, unhealthy lifestyle behaviors. Um, it has been shown to increase stress, it makes it harder to sleep, and it makes a long-term harm on your body. Um, also, people who are lonely um, talk about their depression and anxiety being uh, much higher than people who aren't lonely, and it also can increase your risk of um, developing dementia. Oh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, leukocytes um, are white blood cells that play key roles in the immune system's response to infection. So uh, leukocytes are really important to um, helping us stave off infection if we do get sick. And basically people who are chronically lonely have been shown to have much um, less leukocytes in their body than people who, who aren't chronically lonely. Um, and also will increase your um, uh, fight or flight stress signaling. And then that has a negative impact on your immune system. So basically people who are feeling lonely have less immunity and more inflammation than people who aren't feeling lonely. So what can we do? Especially right now, it's really hard to connect with other people. So we have some ideas and some suggestions for you. Um, virtually join a club or small group that interests you. Um, this, is a, <laughs> this is a great uh, type of activity to do, joining a Zoom call. Um, when, we allow, when we're alone by ourselves, we focus a lot on just ourselves. And so if we're able to find a way to uh, think outside of ourselves through um, communicating with other people or through um, volunteer opportunities, uh, that can make a really big impact on you know, how we're feeling overall. Um, we wanna reach out to our friends and family. So um, a phone call, um, they're finding that video calls are better because we're able to have that face-to-face uh, -face connection um, and be able to, um, you know, kind of see other people's reactions and things like that. Um, but even a text message or just a quick check-in is really important. Um, sometimes we're waiting for other people to make that step. So if we're feeling lonely, it's a good idea for us to just make that step and open up those lines of communication. And um, finally, if you're able to, um, getting a pet can be really helpful. Um, having the, you know, somebody, something else to focus on and having that um, connection and, um, you know, emotional support with something else is really important. So basically, <laughs> uh, everything we have mentioned so far can be used to reduce the um, the fight uh, and, and flight syndrome and the effects of stress on the body. So stress is a physiological state that was designed to help us in hunter-gatherer times when we were in danger. So that's our sympathetic nervous system. So some stress is good, it kind of helps us get up to get going, it helps us work on projects. Um, we, are, we are okay to deal with intermittent stress. What's happening right now is constant, overwhelming, continuous stress. Um, also, how we perceive stress as a positive or negative also impacts our health a lot. So if we're you know, constantly feeling overwhelmed and stressed out internally, then, um, then that's gonna really impact how, how our body is feeling. Um, 75 to 80% of health problems are caused or exacerbated by stress. Um, when I was in college and I asked my sports medicine teacher, like, why is stress so bad? And I always remember he stood there and he clenched his whole body like this for about 10 seconds. And he goes, that is what is happening to every single system in your body. So that just, even though it's maybe just happening up here, we, we are feeling it and it is affecting every part of our body. 
So one of the things that we can do and has been um, proven to be effective in helping people manage stress is meditation, um, guided imagery, breathing techniques all invoke um, something called the relaxation response. So that's our parasympathetic nervous system. So let's do a brief um, mindful exercise, a breathing exercise. So I'm going to invite you guys to sit back in your chair and place your um, hands on, or your, your feet on the ground, place your hands on your knees, and you can just lean back and feel free to close your eyes. Good. Let's just take in five to 10 full breaths here. Let's do this together. All right, I'm gonna ask you guys to put the focus into the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet for five to 10 breaths. Good, and find a word or a phrase that is deeply calming to you. So for some people, the words safe, peace, calm, or relax are good. Breathe in through your nose, and say this word as you breathe out, either out loud or in your mind until you feel more relaxed. So let's go ahead and just do that for the next five breaths. Okay, go ahead and open your eyes, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Welcome back. I hope you guys feel more calm. I always do after that exercise. Great. All right, and now we've come to our questions. Uh, does anyone have any questions? And I hope everybody feels more relaxed. If you want, you can unmute and um, just say, I have a question, or you can raise your hand on here. Thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. Oh, yes, you're welcome. My pleasure. I have a question. I don't know if it's anything that is suitable on this call, but I see announcement went out yesterday that people over 65 and over 75 can get their COVID shot now. Have you gotten any direction on that? Yes, um, the county just literally um, in the last probably hour or so added the 65 plus to the appointment um, form on their website. So it's all through the, um, county. If, um, I don't have it right here in front of my face. Um, but it's, if you in go the to the link to the link to a contact or a phone number, or it's, if you just Google Contra Costa County COVID vaccine, and it's okay. the Contra Costa Health Services. And then on the front page, there's a vaccine appointment um, button and you press that and it takes you to a form and you fill that out. And okay. then it'll put you, it'll spit you out whatever. If it's a wait list, put yourself on it. Because they're, what they're saying is um, at the end of the day, either people don't show up or they're given extra doses. And so then they may call you at like three o'clock and say, hey, you're up can you get here in the next hour or something? And, and they have, they're doing that. I think DVC is a site they're using. Um, I'm not sure where else um, locally, but 
that's the way they're doing it. And just, um, just in the last couple hours, they added the 65 plus. Okay. So we don't go through our, our individual medical plan. We just go through this county, the county. I see somebody submitted a web, uh, a, a URL to click on. Perfect. Yeah. That's the actual forms website. Yes. Um, yeah. So they're linking, they're, they're, they're partnering with CVS and Rite Aid, I think statewide. And so they, but I think they're a little slow on doing it that way. So I think the best option right now is doing it through that form. And then I'm not sure if that gives you an option to do it through one of those pharmacies. So. Hey, what's, what's the. Uh, I, I, if you are. Is it if you are. A Contra Costa County Health Department. Yes, so that's the only Kaiser's going to be slow doing it. If you Kaiser's go, to, terrible. Don't no, go to Kaiser. <laughs> they, they don't have them yet. Yes, if they I, do. Excuse me. I I made a phone call this morning. I have an appointment on Tuesday in Walnut Creek for my vaccination with Kaiser. Okay. Uh, if and everybody I know that's with Kaiser has you have to wait about forty minutes online because they're busy. But then I got the appointment. Uh, I know many people who have their Kaiser appointments for next week. Can you tell me what the website was that you got through? Because I've been in a circle. I have, I have an, a phone number. Okay, please. 866-454-8855. I'll put it on the chat. Okay, fine. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's just for Kaiser. Perfect. Everybody go get yours. <laughs> Yeah, we all want to get it right away. I got one. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm Marilyn, and I got information from Contra Costa Health Service yesterday for vaccine update. And it says here, I clicked in where it says here, and I put all my information down. So I'm waiting for them to give me an appointment time. But I had cchealth.org slash coronavirus. And then I also have a phone number, if, if you'd like that, to yeah. call for appointment. 1-844-729-8410. Make an appointment. So that's just another option. Okay, that was 1-844-729. And the um, meditation uh, practice was really good. I really like that. I mean, I've done a lot anyway, but I never had focused on a word or two words and said that. And when I did that with the words, it really like brought me from here way down to here. So that was great. I never had done that with words before. So thank you. That was great. great. Uh, I got on series and I asked, what is a good anti-inflammatory diet? And they'll give you all kinds of information. Uh, natural anti-inflammatories, inflammatory foods, uh, risks of chronic inflammation. So, I mean, it, it, that's just a starter, you know, just to give you an idea of something pretty easy to ask for with an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I was going to say, too, um, I don't know about other healthcare providers. Um, I personally have Kaiser as a healthcare provider, and Right now, they're giving away um, a Calm subscription for a year with your health insurance. Um, so a, uh, it's an app. A Calm is an app. I think you can maybe access it online. I'm not sure. Um, but it does guided breathing, guided meditation, and, um, you know, like nighttime stories, lots of different things to kind of help you. I know uh, meditation and mindfulness can feel intimidating sometimes. So having a having something to assist you or guide you through can be really helpful. Oh, and I, I just wanted to uh, make one more comment on the Kaiser um, uh, vaccine availability. It was because um, it opened up to 65 and older. It's not for everyone and they do have a screening process, but the 65 and older, six o'clock this morning, a friend of mine called and, and got an appointment. Um, so that's one of the driving things for next week is the 65 and older. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, my son has Kaiser. And I see. It was excellent and very up to the minute uh, information here from everybody. So thank you all for sharing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 
Okay, I'm going to stop the share. I hope everyone got the numbers written down. <laughs> okay.